All right then, the name of this is Simulate Studio Lighting with HDR Textures as a Kook. So one thing to remember, when you're working at a studio and you're lighting CG elements to fit into a filmed plate, usually that lighting environment is not natural lighting from the world, but it's movie lighting, completely fake. The director and cinematographer will use spotlights, Fresnel lenses, big soft boxes, soft balloons, diffuses, barn doors, kooks, and hundreds of variations of this stuff. So the technique that's becoming common now is to capture these lights in HDR format and use them to illuminate your scene. Anytime you have a film set where the CG will be done in post, the VFX supervisor will get an HDR panoramic photo of the set. He could get dozens of them, maybe even hundreds for a big, big scene. So let's look at a movie set panoramic. These sort of images are hard to get because uh, the filmmakers are very possessive of their stuff. They don't let these out on the internet. So here I have an example from ILM. They give this one away on their EXR set or EXR website. And it's just a straightforward movie set in HDR format. Okay. So I'm going to look at um, the light values here. If I stop down very dark, I can see there's a main light at the top. It's got a very high value up at the 4000s. And these reflectors are very high. So this is a real nice HDR panoramic that could be used to light uh, your CG stuff. You know, it looks a little bright here, but that's a non-issue. Now, the first thing you want to do is called light extraction. Now, I'm going to take this main light. This is almost our sun for the scene. And I want to pull it out. So here I have the, the original, then I have the clean. So I just pulled it out using uh, the clone brush in Photoshop so that I have two versions. And then I separate that light and put it onto a little card. Here it is on a square card. As I stop down on that thing, I can see that it still has uh, my nice high values. And uh, I'm going to save this out as a separate file. So I've got my original, my clean and then my separate light. That's called light extraction. And I'm going to use that in Maya. I just launch Maya here. And I'll bring that thing in as an IBL. The IBL originally was, you know, that full set. But now I'm going to separate it into two parts. And the two parts are going to be my clean Okay, here we go. This is the original HDR panoramic. I can see the people. I've got my little fake set on the ground. And there's that big light that was acting as my sun. Then I am going to change to my clean version. The sun goes away. And then I just import in my sun mapped onto a square. So there it is. Now, if I just leave it in that position, everything's pretty much the same. I constrain that cube to a directional light. And now I can move the light. So this is a technique that we do a lot. It's called light extraction. It's basically uh, doing some Photoshop work or you could do it in Nuke, where you extract the light out of the original image, put it onto a card, and then bring it back into your scene at the same scale. That way you can change position, color, intensity, size. And you're still, it's like you're using an IBL, but you're just changing it a little bit. Similar to uh, the earlier examples of uh, IBLs, I'm going to use it with an area light or a directional light as a sun. And then I just constrain it to the sun so I can move the thing around. This is very common. Uh, at ILM, when you get a shot, the first thing you do is cut out all the lights and start moving them around because they're always asking you to change stuff. 
In addition to grabbing the lights straight from an IBL that you get on set, you could also go to a library and open up uh, whatever light they say. They say, give me a 4x4 Kino bank and put it to the left side. You go to the library, you open one of those textures, and you drop it in. Uh, this is becoming common in other softwares. You can buy a set of lights now. Luxology has their slick. Got umbrella lights, soft boxes. a and Tool Company has um, a lighting kit. You know, this is very interesting stuff. You can get a light kit on the iPad for $2. This one's more in my price range. Where you get them on the iPad, and then uh, I'll take HDR photographs of these things. I don't really have a bunch of movie lights at my house, but I've got normal lights, and I can take HDR photographs of those things. My favorite, of course, is the SIBL archive from our friends at HDR Labs. They have a real good kit called Lightsmith for free. You can go download these things. An umbrella light, a fake window, a soft box. These things are great. So what I'm trying to show here is how HDR images are used as textures. They're more valuable than the normal textures ever were. They're more useful. Let's open one up in Maya real quick and uh, see an example of why they're useful. I'm going to open up a, a simple model of a wine glass sitting on a stage. I built like a white psych type of thing. And then I built a wine glass out of glass and I put on the normal uh, mental ray shader of glass. And then let me bring forward a texture. This is just a simple plane. And I'm going to put on there that umbrella EXR that we just saw. And I'll render that. Uh, I got nothing. Let me make sure I'm rendering the right camera, of course. Now, ray tracing on, I'm going to get reflection. Reflection and only reflection. I see the shape of the wine glass, and I see the umbrella there. So that's pretty decent. This is an EXR floating point light texture. If I were to turn on my um, final gather, I will see that it... You know, not only is it going to show up in my render as a reflection, a very nice reflection, it's also going to show up in my render as uh, generating light. You know, we know that Final Gather generates light from textures and colors and objects. When you have a floating point, a star texture, you get more light. And you get the realistic lighting from that umbrella light. Uh, you will notice noise, of course, similar to the noise we got before. The things that we do to solve that are you bring in an area light, an area light that is um, in the shape of the texture, and you can get rid of some of that noise. Uh, let me turn down some of the variables on this thing. It's a little bit hot, but it's quadratic. It's got fall off. I don't want these numbers too high, or else it'll take me all day to render. But uh, you can get good results then. You can simulate lighting with that umbrella light by using some real light and an HDR texture of that light. So if I had a whole bunch of beautiful movie lights at home, I would be making HDR versions of them. And a lot of studios are doing that now. Then they make a library of lights, ideally the first ones that they own. And then when they tell the artist, go get that familiar light that the director will use, and you just go get it as a texture, and you can start using it. Now, what makes this HDR light so much better than, say, a normal texture of the thing? Well, let me, let me bring in a, uh, a JPEG of this instead. I've got an IFF. 
if I change this now to an 8-bit integer of the same light, and I do that render, it will still illuminate the scene. I've got Final Gather on. And it will still show up in the reflections, but it will read the same lighting values. That HDR image was hot, but that's not a clipped value. If we go to my floating point display, and I stop up and stop down, you can see that as I stop down, all that light is still good in the reflection and the original. That's not a clipped light. That is valuable lighting information. Then we go to the IFF version of the same thing. We don't get that nice burn in on the reflection. It's actually quite dull. The difference is that HDR texture had a lot more information. And when you're talking about the reflections of the transformer robots, the reason that stuff looks so good is because of those burnt in highlights. Especially with motion blur. That burn in stays in. That's realistic lighting. That makes all the difference in the world. So let's look at a quick example of uh, how we would photograph our own HDR lights. So here's a case where I have my iPad and I bought that $2 application that has f pictures of lights. And of course I used it and I lit a glass. Um, I would go to I would begin photographing this thing at different exposure levels. The same way I was doing it with panoramics, I can do it on my iPad. Or even better, I can take photographs of the real lights that I have in my house. So here I had a ring light, more of a makeup light from the wife. Or I had a reading light. This was like a hot diode light. When you get a um, big lens flare like that, which is not really useful, you can put a Kleenex over the front and diffuse that light. Okay, so there we have that very same diode light with a diffuser. Now, I take 10 photos of that at varied exposures, bring that into um, Photoshop, make an HDR, or I can do it through PT GUI. In fact, I had more luck doing it in this program than Photoshop. Photoshop did not quite give me as much intensity as I had hoped. So here in PT GUI, even though we're not um, we're not doing a panorama, <coughs> a panorama, we can use PT GUI to make my HDRs. So in this case, at the point of uh, make the HDR, I tell it. Everything's fine, but just don't do any additional corrections. I don't need vignetting. I don't want you to change anything. Just do a preview, and uh, well, you do want to tell it to be rectilinear. So you got to say, you know, I'm not making a panorama. I'm doing a simple one. Now, once you get it to be uh, the, the size that you want, the shape, and then I go to the very end, create a panorama, render. So, you know, there's many different programs you can use for the HDR. Once you're done with it, you check it in Nuke, see how good your values are. Here I did one in Photoshop. Then I did a second one in... Um, PT GUI. Another thing that you can do while you're working in here, you can boost your values. In this case, I had my original and then I boosted it. The original didn't give me high enough values, just a little above one. When I boosted it, at least I got into the four, five, and six range. 
I boosted it with a simple color correct. And you can say, gain up my highlights. Mid-tones a little bit, general a little bit, and then some contrast. And that gives me a, a workable HDR image. Keep in mind, it's uh, EXR. It's still floating point. So I worked on this with all those lights. This one was probably my most successful in that it, um, I got the highest values out of that thing. There's 30, 37, 22, 700. So if I stop down, I can see that all the information is there. Those tiny little pin lights stop back up. And there's just a lot of light information in that HDR image. Okay, so I make the HDR image in Photoshop or PT GUI. I test the image and possibly boost it in Nuke. Save out a, uh, what is this, 3,000 by 2,000. You know, save out an image, crop it, any size you want. And then you paste that image onto a plane. So the first example is um, I'll paste the image onto a plane using a normal shader. Let's see. Graph that shader. One thing you got to do is make sure that you do color management on these things. This is an EXR image. Color management says linear. Do a quick render. That's just a simple race. And there we go. We have a very nice HDR texture map of my light. Uh, let's try the ring. This one will be much warmer because it was, uh, you know, it's a makeup ring. Had more orange in it. And the same way that these two lights have floating point values above 1. Their reflections will also have values way above 1. And they are not clipped. That is lighting information that will remain valid when you go into Nuke or wherever. Now, this little scene has a, a little white psych that I built. I tell the psych to have a shadow catcher, similar to some of the other shots that we did before. And it has a background plate, which was, you know, lit by the ring light, giving me a nice warm look. And as you begin to experiment with these things, you can get some interesting results. But in conclusion, I do have to say the most valuable thing about using HDR images as your textures will always give you the best possible CG images. I have one quick example of some rendered images where with Final Gather I have my photograph of the glass and then a render of the glass. Here's a photograph of the glass and a render of the glass. And the idea is when I have hot highlights on the photograph, I want to get those hot highlights on the render. All right then, let's conclude with that. And remember, using HDR textures is better than using normal 8-bit integer.